With almost all my clients that I work with, one of the most common things I see them asking for is a company wiki or some large database and store of information, right? And you're probably building some for yourself, but simply storing the information is not good enough. Your information is only as valuable as people's ability to find it. If people simply cannot find or reference your info, it's useless. Why did you even store it? So I'm gonna show you the best way to store and help your users find information in a coded document, especially like a large wiki or a database of information. And I'm gonna show you some hidden coda formulas along the way. So here I have a list of, uh, these are Wikipedia articles. Okay. You probably have standard operating procedures or maybe you have just general company information or maybe you're building something for yourself, general articles or news clippings, right? Let's watch how right now I can search the word Mound. Start searching Mound and immediately it's highlighted. My exact search in these cards where that piece is found in a mountain bike. And I know that I'm looking for a mountain bike so I can click here and I can go and I can read my article or piece of information. Or maybe I search the word red. And then here I see reduce, preferred, and reducing redwoods. I want to see redwoods, right? So how do you get this contextual highlighted pop-up to show your users a preview of what they're about to see so that they can really hone in and pick the right information? I'm going to show you that now. And of course, some amazing coded tricks along the way. All right. If you just want to skip ahead and you don't want to see the tutorial, you can just scroll down and get it in the comments below the template for this. But if you stick with us, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to create what I just showed you and show you some really awesome coded tricks along the way. I promise you, it'll be worth it. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a title, a column called searchable text. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the body. So this is the, the large body of text that you would want to search for. Um, whatever it is, whether it's notes or wiki or any other kind of document. Essentially though, right now we're gonna make this more easy to search um, in a lot of ways. So I'll show you first what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna say uh, body dot to text. What that's gonna do is it's gonna strip any formatting from it, just in case there's some weird formatting in it. Notice how it kind of strips it all out, takes out those bolds. Uh, next, what we're gonna do is we are going to rejects replace so that's essentially saying, hey, can you go into this body of text and replace some information? I'm gonna say slash n. What slash n is, is it's short for any new lines, those line breaks that come. Um, and then I'm gonna replace any line breaks with a blank spot, so it basically erasing everything. And then, lastly, I'm gonna lower it. I'm gonna create it all into lowercase, take away every single capital letter. I'll explain more why later, but it'll essentially allow us to search and not worry about capitalization. So if someone has their caps lock on or capitalizes the first letter and it's not capitalized, it'll still catch all that. So that lower will help a lot. Don't forget it. All right. So now I've taken this body here and taken out the line breaks, you'll notice, and I've taken out any formatting and I've lowered it all into small version of the text. Okay. So what we're going to want to do next is now we're going to create our search box. So how you're going to do that, you'll press slash text. Let's turn it to collaborative. Let's name it a uh, search criteria. This is where the user themselves will be inputting what they're searching for. And just to make it a little more pretty, we'll say search with a magnifying glass. All right. So this is called search criteria and that's how we're going to um, look at it later on. So here we go. Now we're going to set a quick filter on this. And so we're going to say, Hey, filter where searchable text uses an interactive filter, and that is search criteria, okay? So now you'll notice that if I have this, I can take this word, right, companies right here, and we can type in companies, and it'll do that. Notice though, if I type in companies, ooh, it actually is working. There must be a larger companies there. Um, so what we're gonna do, just in case though, just in case for all capitalization things, we're gonna create something called um, search criteria dot lower, right? So just in case that individual types in weird capitalization, if there's anything else going on, it's just a safeguard. It may not even be necessary as you just saw with my search box, but safeguard, if you want to be safe about everything, I'm going to call this normalized search because we're, we're making it normal. We're making it all lowercase. 
Okay. Next up, what we're going to need to do is in order to pull this out, we're going to create four different columns called before count, after count, and then we're going to say pad before, we're going to say pad after. So our goal is, as you saw in the beginning, to essentially take and find these words, find these search words within this large body of text. What we need to do though, because we're gonna be using some more rejects, is we have to figure out, essentially, if I'm looking for the word however, right, how many characters are before it, and how many characters are after it. Or if I'm just looking for the word NCDPS, right, how many characters are before NCDPS, and how many are after NCDPS. You'll see why this is more important later. Uh, it will break your formulas if you don't do it. So a before count is going to be, what we're gonna do is we are going to say searchable text dot rejects replace. So again, this is our rejects. We're gonna replace some information. What I'm gonna replace is a concatenated bit of information and that is gonna be a period and a star. What that means in rejects is just everything. Anything you find, I don't care if it's a blank space, a number, a weird thing, just replace every single thing you find. And after that, I'm going to replace, oops, actually, we wanna replace the normalized search first. Do we not name that? Yeah, let's look at this. There we go. Sometimes code has a weird bug where you type in something and it doesn't work the first time. All right, so let's go back. We're gonna say normalize search. So what this is saying is hey Coda, go look at the searchable text, replace everything um, that you find that matches this pattern, right? So the pattern that we're searching for is essentially what the user is searching for and then everything after it, okay? And we'll show you that right now without something. So let's go and let's look for the word uh, software. So notice the word software right there. You'll see that this, there we go. So no code development platforms allow programmers and non-programmers to create application. And notice that right after that, it completely stops. So this gives us every single character before our target word. So now we're just gonna add a length to it, right? So that's how many characters are before. After is gonna be very, very similar, right? So I can even go in here, copy that, paste it, but it's gonna be opposite. Instead of taking the search, and everything. We're going to take everything and then the search. So let's go like that. So remember that rejects for everything is that little dot with a period. And then we're going to concatenate that plus normalize search. All right. So it's saying before the word software, there are 98 characters. And afterwards, there are 94. Um, all right. So here we go. Now we have our before and after count. We're counting those. What we're gonna do next is pad before and pad after, AKA when we get that little blip of information, that little contextual search piece, how big do you want that contextual search to be? So something that'll make it uh, easier for you to figure out over the long run is to create something like a slider where you can adjust that outside of the formula. So we'll call this the uh, characters to pad and one to 100, great. All right, so characters to pad. I'm gonna first just bring it to 85. I think 85 is a good number. What we're gonna do for pad before is we're gonna say if uh, before count is greater than characters to pad, I want characters to pad. If not, I want the before count. So essentially a regex that we're gonna write later will break if you give it a number that's greater than what is there, right? So there are 98 characters before the word software, correct? If we say, hey, can you take the 100 characters before software? If we give that to rejects as a command, it's gonna be like, nope, can't do that. It's just gonna kind of spaz out. So we are safeguarding that saying, okay, if there's less than 80, if there's less than um, that, just grab uh, that amount. So watch, let's watch the word NCDPS, okay? See that there are 31 characters before NCDPS. And so pad before is going to only grab 31 instead of the normal 85, okay? So that's just a safeguard. We do need that. Uh, next up, we're gonna do something very similar, but we're just gonna use after count. So if after count is greater than characters to pad, we are gonna say, I want the characters to pad, and I want the 
after count. All right. So now we have our counts. This is essentially how many characters we're going to pad our target word with. Now we need two more wonderful columns. This is called the extracted text. This is going to use a hidden coded formula. So if you haven't used hidden coded formulas yet, um, you're about to learn one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take whatever word that is and extract it from there and with some padding. So let's say searchable text dot rejects extract. You'll notice that it's not uh, coming. It's not showing because it's hidden. But the moment I press these, notice it has this little like hidden thing. Experimental. Okay. So I'm using an experimental formula. Rejects extract is just going to pull information out of here. What I want to pull is here's the pattern I want to match. Rejects always is given patterns. And it's a weird pattern. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into it, but I want a double curly brace and a one. And then I want a single curly brace and a two. Another period, a double curly brace and a three. And that should be it. We'll see. There's always bugs. Those are normal. So what I want now is this is format. So it's saying, hey, can you put some information in here? So what I'm going to put here is I'm going to put uh, what the amount of characters I want before, which is going to be pad before word. Of course, that doesn't want to erase. Pad before. Then I'm going to put my search criteria. Actually, I'm going to put my normalize. And then I'm going to put pad after. All right. There we go. So you'll notice now that I'm searching for NCDPS. So notice NCDPS is right here. So it grabbed the 13 characters before, or 31. And then afterwards, it grabbed... 85. So just grab the 85 afterwards. See that work one more time with Redwood? We're almost there. We're almost done. Um, so notice Redwoods, right? Here's Redwoods. It's going to find that word. It's going to grab before and it's going to grab afterwards. We can also grab the word coniferous. Conif. Let's see if that shows up. How do you spell coniferous? Aha. There we go. Coniferous. So you can see it's right there in the middle. That's right there in the middle. Again, it's just grabbing that little small blurb. Nastly, what we want to do before we finish up is we're going to create something called found. This is the actual column that you're going to show. It's going to use another hidden code of formula, and it's going to be the final amazing one you need. What you're going to say is extracted text dot split. So that's taking this text, which is not a list, and split turns things into a list. You're going to split it at the normalized search. So say, hey, go look into that normalized search and split it wherever you find that. So it's going to give us two. I think it'll give us two. Let's see. Yeah, see, two things. It's basically the stuff before and the stuff afterwards. I've got a list of two items. But now I actually want to join that list back together with, and this is the hidden one, highlight. And the value I want to highlight is the normalized search. So now you'll notice that there is conif, conif. You'll see that it's highlighted right there for us. So we'll go back, we'll hide these. And then you'll be able to see, here's our found that is gonna be popping up. So let's try one more. Let's try the word money. I don't even know if the word money shows up. Uh, let's try Coda. There it is. Coda is a cloud-based multi-user system. So now last, all you have to do is beautify it. Ooh. 